distinguished guests, welcome to the UN Climate Solutions Summit. Please welcome the Secretary General of the United Nations, the Honorable Antonio Guterres. Welcome, welcome, so great to see you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming, Chancellor Merkel. Thank you for coming. We're delighted to have you all here. We welcome you all. You all committed to prevent, and I'm quoting here, prevent dangerous anthropogenic interference in the climate system. And today, and for a number of years, we know what that means. It means that we must limit global warming to no more than two degrees C above pre-industrial levels and striving for 1.5. And delegates, so far we have failed. We have been at this work for 25 years, but global emissions keep rising. Emissions of coal, oil, gas, some emissions from cement and other uses, and from land use change, from deforestation and from agriculture around the world. Global emissions have been rising. The consequence of that is that the concentration of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere is now at a record, 410 parts per million, the highest it's ever been in at least the last 800,000 years, and recent research suggests in at least three million years. It has never been this high since before humans existed on this planet. And it is rising faster now as a result of burning fossil fuels and developing our economies faster than at any time since before humans existed. The consequences are plain, and you all know this. We have been warming our world. So here you see from 1880 to the most recent available data, average global surface temperatures, which have already gone up by one degree C, nearly two degrees Fahrenheit. And the consequences of that warming are happening now. This is not a problem for the future, for the distant future, or even the near future. This is something that's happening now. Just this year, we have had record flooding in the Midwest of the United States. And those waters have not yet receded here in September of 2019. At the same time, we have droughts, record droughts around the world. Please, no diving from the bridge. We have water shortage. Last year at this time, Cape Town, South Africa, was within several days of running out of water for the entire metropolitan region. This year, it's Chennai, India, where they have literally run out of water. And you can see here, June 15th, 2018, the reservoirs are doing reasonably well. Exactly one year later, they're dry. And that's what one of the reservoirs looks like today, and the only way people are surviving there today is they're trucking in water and people are queuing for hours in order to get the water they need to survive. We have had record heat waves this year in Europe, and that's a region where most people have access to air conditioning or at least cooling centers they can go when it gets to be over 40 degrees C. But in the developing world, where there isn't much air conditioning, people literally lie down on the sidewalk and many of them die. We have Greenland melting at record rates. We have record intensity hurricanes. In the United States alone, in just the last few years, hurricanes Harvey, Irma, Maria, Florence, in other parts of the world, this year, Typhoon Idai, which hit Mozambique in early 2019, killed more than 1,300 people and wiped out an estimated 10% of the gross domestic product of Mozambique, a developing country that can ill afford that kind of economic setback. And of course, right now as we speak here today on September 3rd, 2019, Hurricane Dorian is barreling along having devastated the Bahamas. And interestingly, this hurricane, 
that's happening right now is the most intense ever seen as far north as it is right now in the Atlantic. And that's because of the high surface temperature of the water. High temperatures in the water feed energy into hurricanes. And this is why we have seen more Category 4 and Category 5 superstorms in the Atlantic Basin than uh, in, in any of the recorded records. It's not just hurricanes, it's also wildfire. This is the campfire in California less than one year ago was the costliest natural disaster in the world in all of 2018 and over 86 civilians were burned to death in that fire and that community has still not recovered. But it isn't just the United States, it's all around the world. This is the wildfires, the devastation near Athens in Greece just one year ago, killing more than 80 people. And right now, today, the world is on fire. From Alaska to the Amazon, from Siberia to Senegal, you can see the extensive fires that are happening today. Every dot in that satellite image is a fire in just the last week, over 667,000 fire alerts, as measured by the MODIS and VIRS infrared satellites. Furthermore, burning fossil fuels is harming our health today. The World Health Organization tells us that 8 million people die prematurely every year as the consequence of air pollution, particulate matter, especially PM 2.5, the small particulates, along with ground level ozone and NOx and SOx and volatile organic compounds. These pollutants, most of which are caused by burning fossil fuels, are killing 8 million people a year before their time. So delegates, climate change is not something for the future alone. It's going to get worse unless we can act, but it is harming human welfare, harming our prosperity, and cutting short lives today. So delegates, our global task is straightforward. We must manage the unavoidable, the climate change that's already occurred and will continue to occur, but we must avoid what is unmanageable. If we head towards three, four degrees C of warming, there will be no meaningful adaptation to that world. 